welcome back. Let's chat about what's on my autumn wish list for 2024. So this video is going to be more of inspiration in fashion, accessories, beauty, and a little bit of lifestyle and homeware, and not a list of things that I plan to buy or things that I recommend to buy. Personally, I like using these wish list videos for the complete opposite of what they may seem like. You'd think a wish list of things I want to buy means that I'm shopping, but for me, it's just a way to categorize the things that I really resonate with and then in a few months see which ones I still haven't bought because I shop so slowly that I probably won't even have time to buy more than two if any items on this list so I'll see next month the same items kind of reappear and then I'll be able to really realize what speaks to me in terms of personal style and what I actually like for this kind of styling world building self-expression that I love about it all so yeah, the purpose of the wish list is the complete opposite, but that's the best part about it. I love a little exercise of what am I really into and what is actually getting into my head rather than the world of micro trends and just overstimulation. So let's get into it with the first being the Isabel Morant Beckett wedge sneakers, which are objectively so god awfully ugly, but we've somehow brought it back and it has somehow penetrated my brain and I don't know how because I'm picturing a silver metallic skinny jean with an Isabel Morant Beckett and a ton of random oversized shirts and necklaces and bangles in the 2014 way and I'm like how did we bring back our most hated style? I also realize that 2014 was kind of the only real huge fashion moment that a lot of us grew up in because if you're around my age you would have been like a toddler in the early 2000s and so the voices that I'm hearing mostly on the internet are my age and so we're kind of seeing our first real fashion cycle come through other than the vintage styles like the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, etc. So it's really interesting for that aspect. But yeah, I'm really living for the indie sleaze moment coming back. I'm gonna have to stop saying it because I say it in nearly every single video. It's like we get it, obsessed with these. They come in a few colors and it's also the suede element about them that is interesting to me because I've always hated suede. And suddenly this whole like Chloe runway show suede boho chic moment is back and it's it's getting to me too even though suede is a hated thing of mine for so long. I've been seeing so many big suede bags and just like suede elements. They just feel so chic in a way that I just have never been able to comprehend before. I probably sound like the spokesperson for trends right now, but please don't don't put that on me. I would have actually bought a pair of the Beckett's over the summer because when I was in Italy doing a photography study abroad, we spent the day in Bellagio towards the end of the trip and there was an Isabel Morant store there but I was clearly not getting the memo that this was like for the chic and rich people that can go to Bellagio and live on Lake Como because I went in there I was like do you guys have the Isabel Morant wedge sneaker and the woman was like we don't have a sneaker I was like okay okay and then I was just like oh thank you bye the combination of just not getting the memo that the store was not curated for the 2014 Tumblr kids and being the American who's not speaking enough Italian. I saw this the other day and I was amazed because I've been obsessed with Taekwondo shoes the entire summer. On that same trip when I was in Milan, I went to 10 Corso Como where I met up with a friend who I did a photo shoot with and that was the first time I saw the regular like black Adidas Taekwondo shoes in person and I immediately had to get them. Changed into them immediately, put my old ratty Converse in the bag and did a photo shoot with my friend in the new shoes. And since mid-June when I bought them, I have worn them every single day. They heard literally the perfect shoe because I never liked the Samba, but they were almost what I needed because I love retro sneakers. I don't love chunky sneakers where you can see a big sole and stuff like that. Not a fan, but having a way to wear retro sneakers and get them new and accessible, it's just been like, yes, I love it. I saw Devin Lee Carlson post about these Meow Adidas collaboration shoes, their gold taekwondo shoe, and I was just amazed. I was like, oh my god, because I love metallic things as well, and just, 
it's so good like uh, it's so beautiful the thing about this is that it's like a drop on the adidas confirmed app which I don't know anything about the sneaker world, despite the fact that the first five to 10 minutes of this video is just sneakers. I don't know how that works. Like, what do you mean? It's a drop on the app. Like, I'm not gonna get it. It's not gonna happen, but I'm just gonna look at it from afar because they're stunning. I mean, I'm hoping that it's niche enough that if people resell them, they're not like a $40,000 Air Jordan and it's just like the girls who know, know and like, I need them but it's probably not gonna happen next I'm still talking shoes I would love a pair of black patent leather kitten heels I currently have these kitten heels which serve most of my needs when I need a cute little Carrie Bradshaw moment but the material of them is this fabricy sort of red and black houndstooth and they're really cute they work exactly as i need them to because they're dark they're kind of a neutral and if i want to just dress up an outfit in a cutesy little chic way they always do the trick i wear them a lot at night as well so you're not really noticing that they're red if i'm wearing an all black outfit but i just think that i need to commit a little bit more and just get the full black patent leather kitten heels are something that i've honestly just always stumbled across like if i didn't park next to a buffalo exchange three hours before work one day and was bored enough to go into the Buffalo Exchange, I wouldn't have ever found those and I still would not have a kitten heel. So fate was really the reason for that and so fate will probably be the reason for a black patent leather. The final shoe moment on this list is brought to you by my in disrepair Miss 60 metallic gold boxing boots. I was stupid enough to not realize that metallic in vintage shoes is kind of the worst idea. Like, can you see this? This is every single aspect of this shoe that was metallic is gone. It's just deteriorated, peeled off immediately. But the silhouette of that shoe is absolutely everything. In love with all of the colors they do. But I went for the cheapest option thinking, oh, it's still cool colors, not realizing that they're cheap because they're not gonna last as long. So I really love the black and white colorway because one, they go with everything. They have a pink and white, but I feel like you'd only be able to use that a certain amount of times. And I don't really have much pink in my wardrobe to be able to work with that, but the black and white is perfect. It will last longer because it doesn't have any metallic and it'll go with everything, but they are kind of the most rare and sought after ones on the internet. I saw them for like $500 recently, which is, that's not fun. So my thought was maybe I take my ones to the cobbler and have them replace all of the gold metallic areas with white leather. I feel like they could do that, but I don't know if it's just like doing too much or if the black is gonna look too old and the white's gonna look too new and it's not gonna be the same, but I don't know because I really put trust in cobblers. I think that they do such amazing pieces of magic sometimes that, I don't know, I'm like kind of curious. Maybe we do it as an experiment. Let me know. Do you think it's worth it? Because I've been considering it for a few months and I think I might. I just need that silhouette back in my life. Like so comfortable, a pointed toe on this like sporty moment, it's, it's so sick. That's all I wanna say about shoes though. But moving on, I want to get more studs on everything. I love the Gimaguas belts and bags with just gorgeous studs all over them. I want studded shoes, I want shorts with a bunch of hardware and studs all over them, just like little mini 2014 shorts. There's a pair of studded jeans that Lara Violetta has that is just Oh, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And yeah, if I could just get more studs on everything, we'd be slaying. Maybe even some DIYs. My friend Michael has been DIYing some studs onto this kitten heel, and it's so good. I'm just like, I love it. Just little shiny things, like some creature in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> We're gonna move right on to the two main clothing ideas that I have here. And the first is timeless basics that I can wear out. So this for me means elevated basics. So picture a t-shirt, but it's got a ruching detail here or a big button here, or it's asymmetric or it's boxy. I've seen a t-shirt recently with shoulder pads. Something that brings a regular basic 
away from what it originally looks like and into a little bit of a creative piece. I think one shoulder tops. I think skirts that have really interesting asymmetric details or really big buckles on them. Just pieces that have an original idea about them but the designer has added something subtle but really creative and really stand out for them. I love elevated basics for my wardrobe just because I have created a wardrobe that works with itself so well that most of the things in there can be paired with each other so that I've pretty much done all the work in getting dressed by really being intentional about the pieces that I get and really why I love them and how well they work with everything else so that when I'm getting ready in the morning I can throw on this perfect pair of diesel jeans, a perfect belt, and a top that just is so chic but it's literally just it's just, you know, like threw it on. My key to being put together all the time, if I could even call myself that because we're getting there, is the collection of elevated basics. I would even go on to say that my diesel jeans are an elevated basic because they are this beautiful wide baggy fit, worn low-waisted, always paired with a nice All Saints belt that I have. And it's just always a moment for me, like it's not a ratty pair of jeans that I kind of like. It's just a real like, this is good, this is every day. It dresses up every single outfit every day. I would even consider the top I have underneath sort of an elevated basic. It's just this gray tank top, but it's got these really cute little beads and some silver paint everywhere. And maybe even the top above it. Cause look, I can layer with them as well and they work together because they're simple, they're both gray and white and silver and it works. Shape and form really excites me the most when it comes to clothing rather than color. I do love color but I think that I often gravitate towards something a little bit more neutral just because I love seeing what a piece can do on its own. Again, just the shapes, amazing. There are also a lot of really soft and buttery shirts that are slouchy and can be moved around and that's another kind of elevated basic to me because there's so much versatility in them. A lot of the Paloma wool tops, you can move them around, they have really long sleeves, like they're just so versatile in the way that you wear them. For example, I have a top that can be turned from a cowl neck to a like kind of just off the shoulders top because there's so much room in the neck and I have the option to decide what I'm feeling for the day and it works so well. Now I want to talk about timeless basics that I can wear inside which is mostly just nice chic loungewear and two-piece sets that are comfortable. It's really nice especially because I work from home a lot, editing, doing some planning for shoots, discussing things with clients and I love to feel like I'm not just in my bed rotting all day so having cute pieces of loungewear to me is the best way to get up, get ready, and still be comfortable and still feel like you're in the mindset to do a whole day of work. I've been really into Los Angeles apparel because they have a lot of like cute t-shirts and sweatpants, nice colors, love the muted colors they do. They know how to get the fit right because if you're just buying a t-shirt, it's just going to look like a box, but they get the fit right. They know that we love a baby tee, things like that. And they also sell their samples on Depop for dollars. Like you can get samples of theirs on Depop pop for like three dollars five dollars two dollars and the original product would have been 40 bucks or 20 bucks i think it's great they all have little tiny imperfections like a color might be off there might be a little ink stain a little tiny rip somewhere but for the most part they are all in like really good quality and it's super worth it to take on the samples of a company rather than let them throw them all out it's like people are still going to be able to enjoy it and you might as well do this instead of just throwing them out and I love that. Despite the fact that everything is like $2 on their Depop account, I still haven't even gotten anything because as I said, I shop so slowly that I don't even know when I'm getting these, but that's the, that's the point. I've been loving this for over two years. Now some accessories starting with 
a sailor hat. I love the Vaquera NYC sailor hats that they've been coming out with. There was a really beautiful white one that I totally missed on Essence. There are some really cool gray ones. I've even seen a brown one, but a statement hat. It's just mm. another way to add really cool shapes and details to an outfit. Like, could you just picture a pair of baggy diesel pants, jeans rather, a cool belt with studs, a white baby tee, and a sailor hat. It's so good. It's so simple, but it stands out. The best mix for me. It's just so good. I really wish I didn't miss the white one, but I'm like, they have to bring this back eventually because how could they not? It's the most obvious choice. But the gray one is also really, really beautiful. I love that I've been leaning more into gray recently because it is one of those colors that you tend to ignore because it's not the obvious black. It's not the obvious white. It's not a color. It's just this in-between thing. But there's something about it that's really chic to me. Another brand that's known for pioneering the sailor aesthetic and the culture around it is Jean-Paul Gaultier. Love their stuff too, but obviously not as easily affordable as maybe the Vaquera hats, but obsessed. Love it as a moment in fashion history and just something I can always look at for inspiration. Everyday statement jewelry is something I've really started to get into more because I've done a couple pulls from the brand Alexis Batar for two photo shoots that I styled. One of them is the Roll Up magazine cover that I did recently. The other one has not come out yet, but the photographer just showed me the medium format prints that he did and I'm so excited because the photos are so beautiful. Film has this incredible way of capturing emotion like digital could never and this photographer is someone I've been following for five years maybe. I'm pretty sure I found his account because Kodak probably reposted his work and I followed Kodak when I was younger but I've just been really admiring his work and just cannot wait to have this finished product. But yeah, tangent. Alexis Batar is this beautiful accessories brand. They just make insane sculptures for jewelry and it's simple because obviously it's just like you can get a silver bangle, a gold bangle. It's simple in color, can work with whatever you have, but it's making a statement. They use so many gorgeous organic shapes, crystals. Oh, it's just so beautiful. The final jewelry accessory, jumping back to Jean-Paul Gaultier, is this pin that I styled one of these photo shoots with. And it is just the most beautiful thing ever. I love big safety pins. I have a whole bunch that I got from Amazon that I just love to clip onto clothes. I love that they're a pretty simple way to elevate an outfit. I'm not really one for the adding charms and like trinkets onto your bags and things like that. It's a very cute trend and I enjoy seeing it. It makes me happy to see like a cute little character on someone's bag, but it's honestly just not for me. But I do love the whole clipping and adding things onto things. So simply having a big silver for safety pin or even a big black safety pin onto something, it's a lot of fun. So this Gautier one is literally a big giant gold one and Inscript is the brand name. Connecting to the safety pin, oh, it's just so gorgeous. It's just the perfect like, I hate the words, the phrases, cool girl moment because it's like, it's a safety pin, it's so, I don't know, I hate this again, but if you know, you know kind of thing. You see someone on the street wearing that, you're like, that kind of thing. It's so, it's cringy the way that we phrase them, but it is a beautiful experience that fashion is this like silent communication between people. I love it, it's just a language, um, I read about this in Susan Sontag's On Fashion, or was it On Camp? One of them, but she talked about fashion. It's kind of like if you're wearing a Margiela Tabby, she didn't say like Margiela Tabby, but that's like the first like culty kind of piece that I thought of. Like if you're wearing a Tabby and you walk by someone who's wearing a Tabby or like another brand that's similar and adjacent to the Tabby world, you like lock eyes, you're like, you get it, like you, are in my head kind of thing. It's like, you're two strangers, it's so cool. It really is cool to see someone else who's tuned into the same things that inspire you in the same worlds, same art, and I think that's the beauty of it. I also need a wallet eventually. I've actually never had a wallet in my life. I've had, I don't know, an old person looking Macy's wallet that's dark red when I was 10 to 14, but I just don't have a wallet and I've never gotten a wallet and it's kind of an issue because 
some part of me is waiting for the perfect wallet to come around before I can get one and it's like girl this is a necessity. I used to really love the Mew Mew weaved ones but something about it is giving too polished for me now. Like I don't think it has the same story as I'd want from a wallet. I really love the Balenciaga wallets that have the same studs and texture as the city bags but how do I feel about Balenciaga? I don't really know but I love the character and the texture, so maybe one day a wallet will present itself. Hopefully I'm not 25 and not have a wallet. Like, are you kidding? That's so important and silly of me, but again, shop very slow. Moving away from actual pieces, but still staying in fashion, I would love to collect a lot more fashion magazines, like beauty papers, ID, Dazed, all the cool ones that are really in right now, especially the French and British ones. Although I do love Interview and W Magazine, but it would just be really, 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 really amazing to have a huge collection of genuinely such inspiring pieces of work just in a stack somewhere. I find that opening a print magazine is so much better, obviously, than seeing the same work all over social media because it's really making an impression. And when I personally get inspired by fashion, styling, photography for my own editorial work. I love to not really copy people, but more just get inspired, not look at it, and then whatever remains in my mind is truly what I've taken from it and I add to it. So print magazines really create a more memorable impression in your mind and you don't have to resort to going back and looking and forgetting and having to scroll and all of that because it's like an impact was made and then you're going to translate that through your own art and your own mind and that's a lot better. Plus eventually it's my dream to have a giant wall bookcase like a dark oak wood bookcase with one of those ladders that you have to move across to reach the top shelves and I'm just picturing so many of these magazines on it along with books that I love. That would just be the coolest piece of furniture for a house ever. Homeware in the form of plates, mugs, dishes, stuff like that. I love seeing what they have on the real real and essence because it's like real designers like pottery designers or kind of interior design sculpture adjacent people and I'm like ooh, I could just picture a hodgepodge of different designers work all over my cupboards. That would just be like the most fun and beautiful thing ever. Plus, I feel like a lot of people collect these pieces and don't touch them, but I feel like using them until they're kind of done and then getting a new one, like after maybe five to 10 years, would also be really fun because it's like you're not set on the uniform set of cups or plates in your closet or whatever. Like a lot of people love to have the same set for everything, but I think that just having this random collection of designers and they're always like changing, it's just, it's really nice because you can still make it really good and put together and polished, but give it really some character as well. I think the first real interior thing that I could attainably do is to change these green and ugly walls. I never wanted to paint my room but this was my sister's project before she moved out it's kind of not even finished because there's a white wall over there with holes in the wall that are like somewhat filled and I have just really babyish high school looking decor. This wall over here was a whole bunch of photos from a book called The Fashion Book that sells at Barnes & Noble and probably a lot of other places and I love this piece because I cut out all these photos not really knowing the history or what they were, who took them, who styled them, who they are, the designers, until years of just working as an assistant in the fashion industry, one day I'll come home and I'll look at the wall and I'll be like, oh my god, that's that, blah, blah, blah. And every day I learn something new from it, even though I've seen all these photos for five years straight. So this, even though it is the kind of like babyish poster wall kind of thing, I am going to take all of those photos and put them in a big, large black and white frame and put in the same spot. Definitely gonna take these down. It's like, I wanted to get art, so I printed them from CVS, which is cute, but it's kind of, I don't know messy but my idea for the walls is to paint them white and then do a Tuscan inspired finish on them like a texture so I've seen a lot of people use paintbrushes sponges even random bits of cardboard to do the painting of a whole bunch of different similar colors so let's say white and then 
cream and beige, but very, very, very similar on the color, whatever palette scale they are to each other. And just like, go at it. Like, I think the way that I've seen them do it is they'll kind of like do a cloud of one color and then do a cloud of another color and keep going until it's more of just a texture overall. It's even, it's beautiful, but it's also random. And I love that idea because I don't particularly love color on a wall but I don't really think that white feels complete. So this texture idea is really exciting to me. I also wanna do one accent wall that's just like metal slabs or like plates or whatever. It's hard to explain because no one really has this in their house and it's kind of, it's giving like Kim Kardashian brutalist nightmare house. But I love the idea of just a steel wall for one of them. I don't know if that's a fire hazard, so if it is, never mind. The only way I can describe it is like, I've seen it in like lookbooks and photo shoots. It has an industrial vibe. I think the overall look for a house that I would do is textured kind of European Tuscan or French chateau vibes mixed with retro like a black and white tile kitchen and little hints of industrial elements but very very chic ones not like a rusty exposed pipe or anything like that but just like really polished like pristine metal and things like that but that is a project for when I'm like 50 or 60 years old so I wonder if I'll have the same taste and I better not have a boring taste I better still want that because it would be just the coolest thing to live in so that concludes my autumn 2024 wish list if you'd like to keep up with me on my socials, you can see my editorial styling, editorial photography, and my outfits day to day. I have them linked below. And I hope you had a great day, and I will see you in the next one.